I'm Pat Doris. Welcome to the story. We're starting in Salem because, well, you might have heard there's a little issue in the Senate. Republicans have walked out and stopped all work. Yeah, still nothing happening and less than a month until the session ends. So we're going to sit down with the Senate president, Rob Wagner, to get his take on what's not happening and how he sees this all ending. Rob Wagner's first elected office was the Lake Oswego School Board in 2017. The next year, he was elected to the Oregon Senate. This is his first year as Senate president. He has a bachelor's degree from Portland State and a master's from George Washington University. His roots in the legislature are deep. He worked as an aide in the House in the late 1990s, then spent a decade working for a teacher's union, then was VP at the College of Advancement at Portland Community College. He no doubt hoped this would be a productive first session for him as Senate president, and for a while it was. But since early May, there's been a lot of this. Colleagues, a quorum is not present. A quorum is not present. A quorum is not present. Oregon is one of a handful of states in the country that require two-thirds of lawmakers to be present in the House or Senate to have a quorum and conduct business. Most states just say a majority of lawmakers have to be present. In Oregon, that means 20 senators must show up or no work can be done. Republicans have used that as a tool to stop the legislature every year since 2019. This year, they focused much of their outrage on House Bill 2002. It would clarify a hazy part in Oregon's abortion laws and allow young women under 15 to get an abortion without their parents' permission. The bill also requires insurance companies to pay for gender-affirming care. Senate President, thank you for being available. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming down. You betcha. So uh, we're well into the walkout now. How's this thing end, do you think? Well, honestly, Pat, I'm hoping that it ends with people coming back into this building and we go onto the floor and we do what the voters have sent us here to do. And that is consider bills and vote them on on the floor. So what's it take to get people to come back? I think we're still in conversation with a lot of people. Um, Ultimately, though, it's going to be people in communities and having conversations about why it's important, why do they trust their democracy, what do we do here, and how they need to just come back and be able to participate. Um, That's what the Constitution requires people to do. So you're saying voters in the areas where the Republicans are need to start pressuring them to come back? I want to say the word pressure. I think it's just really important that people understand what we do in this building that impacts their lives. Right now, we have committees that are passing budgets for education and senior services and infrastructure. We have bipartisan bills that are just stacked up and waiting for people to vote on. I think when we get the message out about what actually happens here, that people are going to want to come back and do their constitutional duty and vote on bills. Well, we'll see. But the R's have said, we will come back and vote on those bipartisan bills, but you won't you won't touch 2002, right? No, we've been pretty clear about that, actually, since the beginning of session. And really, when you look at voters and what they're asking us to do, ever since the decision that overturned Roe v. Wade, Oregon voters have said, we need to protect access to reproductive health for women in this state. But and, are they saying that, yeah. that people 15 and younger need to be able to get an abortion without their parental consent? So are I think they, it's, are they saying that? Yeah, so I think it's important when you look at 2002 that what that bill actually does is clarify and codify 50 years of Oregon law that has been there since Roe v. Wade passed. And I understand that that has been the practice in some areas, but in other areas, not so much. OHSU has it on their website that younger than 15, you need parental permission. Yeah, I'm not a technical expert on this. I certainly can put you in touch with Senator Steiner or Senator Lieber or others who, you know, have practiced in this space. I do know that my understanding of that legislation is that we need to make sure that women have access to reproductive health care. That's what this bill does. It's not expanding any rights. It's clarifying the fact that Oregon is a pro-choice state and that we're making sure that women are protected. Is there any scenario in there that you see a compromise within that bill? No, the bill is set to go. So right now, we have a very robust committee system in the state of Oregon, probably more robust than any other state in the entire country. That bill had months of work leading up to the legislative session. It received a hearing in the, in the House. It received a bipartisan hearing through the Ways and Means process. It has received a floor vote in the House where the Republicans, I do want to note, stayed and they had diligent debate and raised a lot of questions. And then they voted on it. And that's what people are asking the Republicans in the Senate to do, is to come back and vote on that bill. 
But are you willing to drive the session off a cliff for that bill? Well, I'm not driving anywhere um, off a cliff. I can tell you this, that Oregon voters are expecting us to be here session after session voting on legislation. And that's what we're committed to do. You've been in this legislature during other walkouts in the past. Does that color sort of the way things are going now? Well, I think it's um, you've seen a pattern that for sure we've seen the minority sort of weaponizing the quorum right now. One and of the few states in the country where they can do that. Absolutely. And so it's disappointing as someone who's been around the process as long as I have and just loves our constitutional democracy. Um, at the same time, I guess the question was, does it sort of color my experience? And does it give you any insights into how you can navigate through this? Yeah, I mean, I think what's really important is that we've established a very clear tone and the voters are fed up with it. When Measure 113 passed this last fall, it passed with over 68% of the vote and it passed in every single state Senate district. And so what I think the voters were clear of saying is, People need to not get paid if they don't show up to work, and they need to be here and voting on legislation. That mattered their lives. So that did pass, but it's not having an impact on this session, and it's not going to get you out of this jam. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. I think there's still 30 days left in the legislative session, which for us is a really long time. And so we're just going to have to see how that plays out. Uh, all right, but just to be clear, no way, no how you're moving at all on 2002? No, that bill is definitely set. That is definitely for our members. It's a bright line. Um, women need reproductive health services in Oregon. We are not going back on our commitment to um, codifying Roe. Although, just one last argument along those lines. Sure. Uh, just intellectually, women are able to get abortion services in Oregon right now. Yeah. Uh, you even know, without that bill. Yeah. Again, I'm not the most technical expert on it. I would definitely have you talk to Senator Steiner or Dr. Steiner, or, you know, somebody like that. But um, my understanding of the legislation is that what this does is it makes sure that there's insurance protection, that we're making sure doctors are actually covered for the services that they're providing. Um, and that, you know, there's another element of this bill, which I think, you know, kind of sometimes gets ignored. And that is having access to gender affirming care. And so I don't want to ignore that. I think it's really important that we've heard from constituents how important that is as well. All right. Um, what about the other bills that seem to be sort of on that kill list, as I understand it? That'd be the gun bill. Um, and I'm spacing on what the other, the third one is. Yeah, there's legislation. That, and again, like, I don't know if you've seen a list. We haven't seen a list. But even with that, I think people are done with sort of backroom deals where people are putting together kill lists on legislation. We're asking people to be really transparent. If they have objections to particular legislation, then make your argument, make it in committee, make it during an election cycle, make it here and make it on the Senate floor. So in terms of these kind of backroom deals around kill lists, I think people are done with that. We want legislators from all over the state to come with wish lists. We want them to show up with things that they want to work on together. Well, the Republicans you know? would wish that you'd move 2002 out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I don't think that's where the majority of voters are. And that's not what they send us here to do. Okay. As time goes by, I wonder if the pressure increases on you from your constituents saying, fix this, figure this out. Yeah. I mean, I will what's, say... What's that like? Yeah. And, and my constituents have been very clear that Oregon is a pro-choice state and they support that legislation and they support the position that we're making right now. But is there a growing pressure on you to try and figure out a solution before the session's done? Not that I felt. Huh. Okay. Yeah. And do you worry that as time goes by that your own members might have second thoughts? We've seen that happen in past sessions. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, you can talk to members individually. And what's nice about the Oregon state legislative uh, process is that I'm here as the Senate president. I kind of have a job in helping the Senate sort of function. But every individual senator has the opportunity to bring the values from their constituents forward and have that robust debate. That's why we have a democracy. Well, you have a team, but you're the coach, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know necessarily think that that's an apt uh, characterization. I, I think it's more just a, maybe if you want to say a facilitator, that's fine. Um, but I'm not putting individual people in and out of the game. Everybody's in the game. Everybody's here to play because their voters sent them here.